This video is brought to you by Spirits Network. For more top shelf entertainment, head to spiritsnetwork.com. Sign up to watch and taste your favorite shows. If you're gonna have a drink, you might as well make it an iconic one. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cocktails made famous by TV and film. For this list, we'll be looking at mixed alcoholic drinks that feature prominently in a specific television series or film, and went on to enjoy increased popularity as a result. To be clear, we're not ranking these cocktails based on taste, but rather just how iconic they are. Number 10. Orange Whip – The Blues Brothers Well, that's a cocktail name that's sure to turn a few heads. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? Three orange whips! But then again, we wouldn't expect anything less from a film so infinitely quotable as 1980's The Blues Brothers. The orange whip consists of orange juice, vodka, rum, and cream. The ingredients are blended without ice and then poured into a glass on the rocks. It's sweet, it packs a punch, and is basically a boozy orange milkshake. When the beverage was featured in the film, it gained a notable boost in name recognition, which is funny because neither of the Blues Brothers order an orange. It's actually their decidedly uncool parole officer, Burton Mercer. Fun fact, John Candy actually improvised the line at the director's prompting. Number 9. Sweet Vermouth on the Rocks with a Twist – Groundhog Day In this classic early 90s comedy, Bill Murray plays Phil Connors, a TV weatherman who finds himself reliving the same day over and over again. To make matters worse, this time loop keeps him stuck in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, a small town for which he has great disdain. While it might not be quite as vibrant or bustling as Pittsburgh, Punxsutawney now bears the distinction of having popularized this particular cocktail. Sweet Vermouth on the Rocks with a Twist, please. Sweet Vermouth on the Rocks with a Twist is certainly a mouthful, and as Phil's face reminds us, it's not for everyone. That being said, the botanical qualities of sweet vermouth, Italian in origin, with a hint of lemon, might be just what the doctor ordered, especially if you're dreaming of Rome. It always makes me think of Rome, the way the sun hits the buildings in the afternoon. <sighs> Number 8. Singapore Sling with Mezcal on the Side Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas as a general rule, viewers should not attempt to emulate anything that Raoul Duke and Dr. Gonzo do in this psychedelic black comedy. The film is a cult classic and truly one of a kind, but it's the sort of wild ride that's best observed from a safe distance. If you want a beverage to pair with your screening, however, a round of Raoul and Gonzo's preferred one-two punch of alcohol likely won't do much harm. 24 hours ago, we were sitting in the Pogo Lounge at the Beverly Heights Hotel, in the patio section, of course drinking Singapore slings with mezcal on the side. A Singapore sling is made with gin, cherry brandy, Cointreau, Benedictine, pineapple juice, grenadine, fresh lime, and a dash of Angostura bitters. It's dangerously easy to drink and packs a wallop, especially when served with a shot of mezcal on the side. This is the American dream in action. Number 7. Red Eye – Cocktail this film might have been deemed Razzie-worthy by critics, but that didn't stop it from making a ton of money at the box office or popularizing this distinct cocktail. Hey, bartender, you know how to make a red eye? <laughs> now, using alcohol as a hangover cure is not the greatest idea, but as many a bartender has argued, sometimes the hair of the dog is a necessary last resort. You know how to make a red eye, Mr. What's your name? Brian Flanagan. No, I'm sorry I haven't had the pleasure as yet. A variant of the Bloody Caesar or Bloody Mary, two other popular morning or brunch cocktails, the red eye replaces vodka with beer and adds a raw egg to a base of chilled tomato juice. Throw in a bit of Tabasco and you've got yourself an appropriately named red eye. Number 6. French 75 – Casablanca There are few films as enduringly romantic as Casablanca. The 1940s classic is packed with iconic elements, quotable dialogue, the instantly recognizable song As Time Goes By, one of the most memorable kisses in cinema history, and French 75. Sasha! French 75. Put up the whole row of them, Sasha. Starting here and ending here. Though many of the drinks on our list today are admittedly an acquired taste, this sweet, bubbly, yet strong and sophisticated cocktail is a real crowd pleaser. The recipe is simple, champagne, gin, lemon juice, and simple syrup. 
Mix them together in appropriate proportions and you've got an instant classic. So named for the French 75mm field gun, this cocktail has got kick and an important place in cinematic history. Number 5. Cosmopolitan – Sex and the City Cocktails seem to have more difficulty making an impression on TV than in film, but that makes the ones that do stand out all the more impressive. You know what? I think I need to get a drink. I'll get it. Cosmopolitan, right? Yeah. The origins of this drink are much contested, with about a dozen different people claiming to be its inventor. What everyone can agree on, however, is that a Cosmo requires vodka, often lemon-flavored, cranberry juice, fresh lime juice, and triple sec. That afternoon, I dragged my poor, tortured soul out to lunch with Stanford Blatch and attempted to stun it senseless with Cosmopolitans. There's also no debate as to how the Cosmopolitan went from a newly trendy cocktail in the early 90s to a household name. Bartenders everywhere have Carrie, Miranda, Charlotte, and Samantha to thank for that. Four more, please. Coming right up. These four influential girlfriends made it their drink of choice, and women across America followed suit. It seems the answer is this. Cosmopolitans plus scotch equals friendship with an X. Number 4. Manhattan. Some like it hot. Funnily enough, the Manhattan actually owes its pop culture presence to a film set in Chicago and Miami. Dolores, do you still have that bottle of vermouth? Sure. Verm who needs vermouth? We've got bourbon. We can make Manhattan. This black and white gender bending comedy was released in 1959 and stars Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis, and Jack Lemon. Aboard a train where alcohol and men are both forbidden, a makeshift batch of Manhattans are whipped up in a hot water bottle. It's charming and risque in equal measures. Made using whiskey, sweet vermouth, and bitters, the Manhattan was already a relatively popular cocktail by the time that this film was released, with its roots going back to 1870. But this scene added an extra layer of appeal through association. Number 3. Old Fashioned – Mad Men To call this show influential is a gross understatement. Can I get an old fashioned? Much as Sex in the City inspired the fashion, vocabulary, and ideals of a generation, so too did Mad Men have a major impact on its dedicated audience. In fact, the show was such a cultural phenomenon that it gave birth to a term known as the Mad Men Effect. Can I get you another drink? Yeah. I'll do this again. Old fashioned, please. Now, thankfully, not everything from this 1960s set series is portrayed as cool, most notably the decade's overt misogyny. But alongside his fashion sense, Don Draper's drink of choice certainly drew a lot of attention and imitators. Bourbon or whiskey, a healthy splash of Angostura bitters, a sugar cube plus a citrus twist, and you've got yourself a delicious drink that your grandfather would have been proud of. Old fashioned. Number 2. White Russian – The Big Lebowski This 1998 Coen Brothers film made a modest return at the box office, but its pop culture legacy continues to pay dividends. Endlessly quotable and extremely rewatchable, The Big Lebowski endures on the strength of its slacker protagonist, The Dude. Let's be completely honest with one another. A drink made of vodka, coffee liqueur, and cream is a hard sell. Do you want a drink? Yeah, sure. White Russian. Then again, you probably wouldn't be very impressed if you saw somebody doing groceries in their housecoat either. But such is the magic of Jeffrey the Dude Lebowski. His attitude imbues his every action and choice with an effortless sense of cool. What's your drink, dude? White Russian, thanks. White Russian. And you know what? Having given it a try, we had to admit that a White Russian is absolutely delightful. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Sure, it fit okay, Greg? Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Jack. Good. Tom Collins, coming up. Bonnie, free my ties. Yes, sir. sir. Dad, what are you doing here? Hello, son. I sent for him. Hello, Lucille. Hello, Nuriev. How you doing? You got a 7-7 seven, seven for me. Sure, doll. <laughs> okay, I came here for the cilantro crawfish gumbo, all right? Which is, after all, the only excuse one can have for being in this restaurant, which is, by the way, almost completely empty. I'm very sorry, sir. Jam be straight and a Corona. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Number one, Vodka Martini, the James Bond franchise. Suave, sophisticated, and deadly, Agent 007 has been the definition of cool for decades. Can I get you something, sir? Vodka Martini, shaken, not stirred. It's only fitting that his drink of choice be equally omnipresent within the pop culture landscape. Vodka Martini, shaken, not stirred. So influential is Bond, in fact, that he's muddled the definition of a martini. As director of the New York bartending school Tom Sisson told Time Magazine in 2008, before Bond hit the big screen, a martini was made with gin by default and never shaken. A medium dry martini, lemon peel shaken, not stirred. Vodka? Of course. Of course, diehard fans of Ian Fleming's novels might be more drawn to the Vesper Martini introduced in Casino Royale, made with gin, vodka, and aromatized wine. Dry Martini. Oui, monsieur. Wait. Three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure of Kina Lille, shake it over rice, and then add a thin slice of lemon peel. Yes, sir. This video is brought to you by Spirits Network. For more top shelf entertainment, head to spiritsnetwork.com. Sign up to watch and taste your favorite shows.